Um, so Prim's algorithm doesn't just have to apply to a network uh, directly. It can apply to a, uh, what's called a, a tabular form of a network. Um, and this is essentially the same information that the network holds, but written as a table instead. You can go from table to network. You can go from network to table. Um, but if the information is given to you as a table, it's just a bit of extra effort to draw the network out and then perform prims, because actually you can perform prims directly onto the table. Okay. So this is a different network than the one we've just looked at. Um, it's got six nodes, and they're called A, B, C, D, E, and F. And then we've got the distances between each node as a direct connection. If two nodes aren't connected, for example A and C, then we've got an infinite sign. It just means they're not connected. Okay. So, in exactly the same way as you did with the network form of Prim's algorithm, we choose, arbitrarily, a starting node. Where do we want to start? A. A. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the number 1 above A, and what that's telling me is it's telling me that A is part of my tree. A is part of my tree. Now, as my tree grows, what I don't want to do is choose an arc which takes me back to A. I don't want to do that, because that's going to create a cycle. So, to represent that on the table, I'm going to cross out row A, so that I don't go back to it. And now I look down, all of my nodes, which are part of my tree, in this case it's just A, and I choose the smallest number. And what that's doing is it's finding the closest node to my tree. So at this stage, the closest node is B, and it's a distance of 2. So now that I've found that, I circle it to indicate that I've chosen that arc. I'll put a number 2 above column B to indicate it is now part of my tree, and I now cross out row B to stop me going back to node B later on. And I just keep repeating that process. So I look down now both of these columns and choose the smallest one that's not crossed out because I want the closest node to my tree, not just to the node I've just added. And I would find that actually it is node F, but from node A. Okay, so that's the smallest number. So therefore, F is now part of my tree, so that gets a 3 above it. And that now gets crossed off, so I don't go back to F by mistake. Okay, you happy with what I'm doing here? The process just keeps repeating until everything's crossed off. I look down all three of mine, so I've got a choice of 6, 8, 3, 3, or 4. So I've actually got an arbitrary choice now of 3, and it does not matter which you choose. Okay, you can choose either. Um, I'm going to go to, uh, uh, let's go to C. Okay, so I'm choosing that one. Cross off that row so I don't go back to it. And put a 4 above that one to indicate that it, that is part of my tree. And now I've got four columns to look down. So I've got a 6, a 5, a 3 or a 4. So I would choose the other three now. Cross off that row. And put a 5 above D. And then finally I look down all five of these columns and I choose the smallest number. And it is that number there. Um, you could then put a 6 and cross off that row, but you don't need to because we've now finished. Okay. N nodes, N minus 1 arcs is what a tree has. Here we have 6 nodes, so we need 5 arcs. And you'll see that 5 numbers are circled. Those are the arcs that I've chosen. Uh, every row will have exactly one circled, except for the row you start at. Okay, you cross that off without circling anything. Um, and from there, we can just we can draw our minimum spanning tree. So six nodes. There's my A, my B, my C, my D, my E, and my F. And A connects to B by a distance of two. Okay, it's been circled, so I've selected that arc. F connects to C by a distance of 3. F connects to D by a distance of 3. E connects to D by a distance of 2. 
and f connects to a by a distance of 5. And we can see that that tree has indeed spanned the entire network. Total distance, 15. And that's Prims on a table.